In the shadowed streets of Detroit, veteran cop Charlie Thompson faces a choice that could shatter his world. When a seemingly ordinary encounter with an elderly woman spirals into a web of corruption and deceit, Charlie must confront his own demons and the dark secrets lurking within the police force. Will he find redemption, or will the truth destroy everything he holds dear? Before we dive into this gripping tale, Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you're ready for a story that challenges the line between right and wrong. Charlie Thompson sat in his patrol car, the low hum of the engine vibrating through the seat. His fingers drummed impatiently on the steering wheel as he surveyed the dimly lit streets of Detroit. It was another uneventful night in a neighborhood he had long since written off as a lost cause. The buildings were worn down, the storefronts shuttered, and the streets seemed to echo with the whispers of better days gone by. He sighed heavily, glancing at the clock on the dashboard. Another four hours before his shift was over, and the monotony was wearing on him. Charlie had been a cop for over two decades, and the job had changed him. Once, he believed in serving and protecting. Now, he felt more like a caretaker of decay, watching over a city that seemed to crumble a little more each day. Beside him, Jake Harris, his young partner, sat quietly, eyes scanning the streets. Jake was fresh out of the academy, full of ideals and energy. He looked up to Charlie, seeing him as a mentor, someone who had seen it all and could teach him the ropes. But tonight, even Jake seemed subdued by the oppressive silence of the night. You ever get tired of this, Jake? Charlie asked, breaking the silence. Jake shrugged, a small smile playing on his lips. It's the job, right? Gotta take the good with the bad. Charlie grunted in response, not convinced. He had seen too much of the bad, and it had tainted his view of the good. As they cruised past a closed corner store, a figure caught Charlie's eye. A woman stood just outside the door, hunched over slightly, holding a plastic grocery bag in one hand and a cane in the other. What's she doing out here at this hour? Charlie muttered, narrowing his eyes. Jake followed his gaze. Probably just heading home. Looks harmless enough. But Charlie wasn't convinced. Something about her unsettled him. She seemed out of place. Too old to be out this late. Too suspicious to be standing there for no apparent reason. He had developed a sense for trouble over the years, and this woman fit the profile. Let's check it out, Charlie said, pulling the squad car to a stop across the street. Jake hesitated for a moment but nodded, following Charlie's lead. They stepped out of the car, the sound of their boots hitting the pavement punctuating the stillness of the night. As they approached, the woman barely reacted, her eyes hidden beneath the brim of her hat. Evening, ma'am, Charlie called out, his voice cutting through the quiet. The woman turned her head slowly, her expression calm, almost serene. Evening, officer. Charlie stopped a few feet in front of her, his posture straightening. What are you doing out here? Just on my way home, she replied evenly, lifting the bag slightly as if to show there was nothing suspicious inside. Charlie glanced at Jake, who seemed unsure but willing to follow his partner's lead. You got an ID? Charlie demanded, his voice sharp. The woman remained silent for a moment, then nodded, reaching into her coat to produce a worn wallet. She handed him her ID without a word. Clara Johnson, Charlie read aloud, his eyes flicking to the local address. You live around here? All my life, Clara replied, her voice steady. Charlie handed the ID back to her, his mind racing for something to justify his suspicion. But there was nothing, just a loaf of bread, a carton of milk, and some canned goods in her bag. He felt his control over the situation slipping, and it irked him. Look, it's late, Jake interjected gently, sensing the tension. Maybe we should let her be. Charlie hesitated, his pride and authority clashing with the logic in Jake's words. Finally, he stepped back, nodding reluctantly. All right, ma'am, get home safe. Clara nodded, her eyes meeting his, with an unreadable expression. Thank you, officer. As she walked away, Charlie felt a strange unease settle over him. He watched her disappear into the shadows, a small figure swallowed by the night. Jake glanced at him, a question in his eyes, but Charlie shook his head, dismissing the encounter. Let's keep moving, Charlie said, climbing back into the patrol car. Jake followed, 
still processing the exchange. He respected Charlie, but moments like this made him question the older man's judgment. As they drove through the quiet streets, Jake couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the night than met the eye. He just didn't know what it was yet. The patrol continued through the night, the streets of Detroit a blur of flickering streetlights and darkened storefronts. Inside the car, the atmosphere was tense, a quiet unease hanging between Charlie and Jake. Charlie's mind was elsewhere, replaying the encounter with Clara over and over, trying to pinpoint what had bothered him so much about the woman. Jake, sensing his partner's distraction, tried to lighten the mood. You know, Charlie, my mom always said you can't judge a book by its cover. Maybe she was just a lady trying to get home. Charlie grunted, keeping his eyes on the road. Maybe, but in this line of work, you learn to trust your gut. Jake nodded, though he wasn't entirely convinced. He admired Charlie's instincts, but couldn't shake the feeling that sometimes they led him astray. As a rookie, Jake was still learning the ropes, trying to balance respect for Charlie's experience with his own sense of right and wrong. They turned down another street, the car's headlights cutting through the darkness. The neighborhood was quiet, too quiet, and Charlie couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. He glanced at Jake, who was scanning the sidewalks, looking for any sign of trouble. How long have you been on the force now, Jake? Charlie asked, breaking the silence. About a year, Jake replied, a hint of pride in his voice. Still got a lot to learn. Charlie nodded, a small smile playing on his lips. You remind me of myself when I started, all bright-eyed and full of dreams. Jake chuckled. And now? And now I know better, Charlie said, his tone turning serious. This job changes you, Jake. You see things you can't unsee. You do things you never thought you would. Jake was silent, absorbing Charlie's words. He had heard similar sentiments from other officers, but it was different hearing it from Charlie, someone he looked up to. It made him wonder what kind of cop he would become, what lines he would be willing to cross. As they drove on, the radio crackled to life, breaking the silence. Unit 12, we have a report of a disturbance at 5th and Main. Can you respond? Charlie picked up the radio, acknowledging the call. Copy that, dispatch. We're on our way. They turned the car around, heading toward the intersection. The streets were still empty, the city asleep around them. But as they approached the scene, they could see a small crowd gathered outside a rundown apartment building, their voices rising in agitation. Charlie parked the car, and they both stepped out, the air buzzing with tension. As they approached, a middle-aged man with a scruffy beard and wild eyes rushed toward them, his voice loud and desperate. Officers, thank God you're here. It's my neighbor. He's gone crazy. He's been yelling and throwing things for hours. Charlie nodded, his expression calm but alert. All right, sir, we'll take care of it. Just stay back. Jake followed Charlie as they made their way through the crowd, their presence parting the sea of anxious faces. The building loomed ahead, its windows dark and foreboding. The noise from inside was unmistakable, shouts and crashes echoing down the street. They climbed the stairs to the third floor, the sounds growing louder with each step. Charlie motioned for Jake to stay close, his hand resting on his holstered weapon. They reached the apartment door, which was slightly ajar. The wood splintered as if it had been kicked in. Charlie pushed the door open, revealing a chaotic scene inside. Furniture was overturned, and the floor was littered with broken glass and debris. In the center of the room stood a man, his face flushed with anger, a baseball bat clutched in his hands. Sir, put the bat down, Charlie commanded, his voice steady but firm. The man turned, his eyes wild and unfocused. Stay back, I don't want any trouble. Jake stepped forward, trying to defuse the situation. Hey, we just wanna talk. Let's put the bat down and figure this out. The man hesitated, his grip on the bat loosening slightly. But before he could respond, Charlie moved in, his patience wearing thin. Drop it now, Charlie barked, his hand moving to his weapon. The man flinched, the bat slipping from his fingers and clattering to the floor. Charlie moved quickly, securing the man's hands behind his back with a pair of handcuffs. Jake watched, a mix of relief and unease settling over him. The situation was under control, but he couldn't shake the feeling that Charlie's approach had been too aggressive, too quick to escalate. 
As they let the man out of the apartment, Jake glanced at Charlie, searching for the right words. You think maybe we could have talked him down? Charlie shook his head, his expression hard. Sometimes you can't take chances, Jake. You hesitate, and someone gets hurt. Remember that? Jake nodded, though his mind was still racing. He respected Charlie, but moments like this made him question whether there was a better way, a way that didn't rely so heavily on force and authority. As they drove back to the precinct, the city slowly waking around them, Jake couldn't help but think about Clara and the encounter earlier that night. He wondered if there was more to her story, more to the quiet strength she had shown in the face of Charlie's authority. The cracks in Charlie's facade were beginning to show, and Jake was starting to see that the man he admired might not be the hero he once thought, but he also knew that change was possible, that even the most hardened hearts could be softened if given the chance. The next day, the precinct was abuzz with the usual morning chaos, phones ringing, officers coming and going, and the hum of conversations filling the air. Charlie sat at his desk, staring at a pile of paperwork that seemed to grow larger by the minute. His mind, however, was elsewhere, still fixated on the events of the previous night. Jake, sitting across from him, was also lost in thought. The encounter with Clara and the incident at the apartment had left him with a lingering sense of unease. He had always believed in the integrity of the badge, but recent events had shaken that belief leaving him questioning not just Charlie's methods, but his own understanding of right and wrong. As Jake sifted through reports, he noticed a familiar name pop up on his screen, Clara Johnson. His curiosity peaked. He began to dig deeper, pulling up any information he could find. What he discovered was surprising. Clara wasn't just an ordinary citizen. She was a corrections officer working undercover to investigate police misconduct. The revelation hit Jake like a bolt of lightning. Clara had been watching them, assessing their actions, and gathering evidence. He realized that the calm demeanor she had shown during their encounter wasn't just strength, it was confidence. She had known exactly what she was doing. Jake glanced at Charlie, who was oblivious to his partner's discovery, still engrossed in paperwork. Jake hesitated, unsure of how to approach the subject. He respected Charlie, but he also knew that what he had found couldn't be ignored. Charlie, Jake began cautiously, I found something interesting about that woman from last night, Clara Johnson. Charlie looked up, his expression curious but wary. Oh yeah, what's that? She's not just some random lady, she's a corrections officer. Apparently, she's been investigating police misconduct, Jake said, his voice steady. Charlie's eyes narrowed, suspicion creeping into his gaze. Investigating us? For what? Jake shrugged, trying to keep his tone neutral. I don't know all the details, but it sounds like she's been looking into corruption and abuse of power. Charlie leaned back in his chair, his expression hardening. You think she's got something on us? Jake hesitated, choosing his words carefully. I think she's got something on you, Charlie, and maybe others in the department. Charlie scoffed, a defensive edge in his voice. You think I'm corrupt, Jake? After all these years? Jake shook his head, trying to convey his sincerity. No, I don't. But I think maybe you've crossed some lines. Lines that Clara's been watching. The tension between them was palpable, a silent battle of wills playing out across the desk. Charlie's pride and sense of authority clashed with Jake's growing awareness of the truth. It was a moment of reckoning, one that could either break their partnership or redefine it. Charlie sighed, running a hand through his hair. All right, let's say she's investigating. What do we do about it? Jake took a deep breath, feeling the weight of his next words. We talk to her. We find out what she knows. And if there's something wrong, we fix it. Charlie frowned, skepticism etched on his face. You think it's that simple? Jake met his gaze, determination in his eyes. I think it's worth a shot. We can't just ignore this, Charlie. If there's a problem, we have to be part of the solution. Charlie was silent, his mind racing with conflicting thoughts. He had spent years on the force, doing what he thought was right, but now he was being forced to confront the possibility that he had been wrong. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but Jake's words had struck a chord. All right, Charlie said finally, his voice low but resolute. 
Let's talk to her, see what she's got. Jake nodded, relief washing over him. It was a small victory, but an important one. He knew that change wouldn't happen overnight, but this was a start, a step toward accountability and redemption. Later that day, they tracked down Clara at a local diner, a quiet place where they could talk without prying eyes. Clara sat at a corner booth, sipping a cup of coffee, her expression calm but alert as they approached. Mind if we join you? Jake asked, his tone polite but firm. Clara gestured to the empty seats, her eyes studying them carefully. Go ahead. Charlie and Jake sat down, the tension between them palpable. Clara set her coffee cup down, meeting their gaze with a steady calmness that belied the gravity of the situation. We know who you are, Jake began, keeping his voice level. And we know what you've been doing. Clara nodded, unfazed. I figured you'd figure it out eventually. Charlie leaned forward, his expression serious. Look, we're not here to cause trouble. We just want to know what you know. Clara studied him for a moment, as if weighing his sincerity. Then she nodded, her expression softening slightly. All right, I've been investigating corruption and misconduct within the department, and I've got evidence, enough to bring some serious charges. Jake exchanged a glance with Charlie, who seemed to be processing the information. And what about us? Jake asked. Are we part of that? Clara shook her head. Not yet, but I've seen enough to know that things need to change. If you're willing to help, we can work together to clean this up. Charlie was silent, his mind racing. He had always prided himself on being a good cop, but now he was being forced to confront the possibility that he had been complicit in something much darker. It was a humbling realization, one that left him feeling exposed and vulnerable. Jake, sensing his partner's struggle, spoke up. We wanna help. We wanna make things right. Clara nodded, a faint smile playing on her lips. Then let's get to work. As they left the diner, the sun setting in the distance, Charlie and Jake felt a renewed sense of purpose. The road ahead would be difficult, fraught with challenges and hard truths, but they were ready to face it head on. For Charlie, it was a chance to redeem himself, to prove that he was more than the sum of his mistakes. And for Jake, it was an opportunity to be part of something bigger, to help build a better, more just future for the city he loved. Together, they would unmask the truth and fight for the change that Detroit so desperately needed. The days that followed were a whirlwind of activity as Charlie, Jake, and Clara worked together to gather evidence and build a case against the corrupt officers within the precinct. For Charlie, each piece of evidence was a bitter reminder of how far things had fallen, but it was also a chance for redemption, a chance to do what was right and make amends for his past actions. Jake, meanwhile, found himself growing into his role as a bridge between Charlie and Clara. His youthful optimism and determination to see justice served were infectious, and he quickly became a driving force in their efforts. It was a delicate balance, but together they formed a formidable team, united by a common goal. As the investigation progressed, the scope of the corruption became increasingly clear. It wasn't just a few bad apples, it was a systemic issue, deeply rooted in the culture of the precinct. Officers who had once been considered untouchable were now under scrutiny, their actions laid bare for all to see. Clara, with her calm demeanor and sharp instincts, proved to be an invaluable ally. Her years of experience in law enforcement gave her a unique perspective, and she was able to navigate the complex web of deceit and corruption with ease. Together, they uncovered a network of officers who had abused their power, manipulating the system for personal gain. The trio spent long hours poring over documents, interviewing witnesses, and piecing together the puzzle. It was exhausting work, but the stakes were too high to do anything less. They knew that they were up against powerful forces, but they also knew that they had truth and justice on their side. As the evidence mounted, they prepared to present their findings to the higher-ups. It was a tense and nerve-wracking process, but they were determined to see it through. They knew that this was their chance to make a real difference, to bring about meaningful change and restore integrity to the department. The day of reckoning finally arrived. The precinct was abuzz with anticipation, officers and staff whispering in hushed tones as they awaited the outcome. Charlie, Jake, and Clara stood together, united in their resolve as they prepared to present their case.
The meeting room was packed, the air thick with tension as they laid out their findings. Clara took the lead, her voice steady and confident as she detailed the extent of the corruption. She spoke of officers who had abused their power, manipulated evidence, and engaged in illegal activities. She presented the evidence they had gathered, each piece a damning indictment of the system that had allowed such corruption to flourish. Charlie and Jake backed her up, their own experiences and insights adding weight to her words. They spoke of the need for accountability, for a change in the culture that had allowed such abuses to go unchecked. It was a powerful and compelling argument, one that left no room for doubt. As they finished their presentation, the room fell silent. The weight of their words hung in the air, a stark reminder of the challenges that lay ahead. But there was also a sense of hope, a sense that change was possible and that justice would prevail. The decision came swiftly. The higher-ups, faced with the overwhelming evidence, had no choice but to act. The corrupt officers were suspended, pending further investigation, and a task force was established to root out the remaining rot within the department. For Charlie, it was a bittersweet victory. He had lost friends and colleagues, but he had also gained a renewed sense of purpose. He knew that the road ahead would be difficult, but he was ready to face it with integrity and determination. Jake, meanwhile, felt a sense of pride and accomplishment. He had played a key role in bringing about change, and he was determined to continue fighting for justice. He knew that there was still much work to be done, but he was ready for the challenge. As for Clara, she was content knowing that her efforts had made a difference. She had uncovered the truth and helped bring about change, and she was ready to move on to her next mission. But she knew that she would always carry a piece of Detroit with her, a reminder of the fight for justice that she had helped lead. In the days that followed, the precinct began to heal. The atmosphere was different, lighter, as officers and staff adjusted to the new reality. There was a renewed sense of purpose, a determination to do better, and to uphold the values that the badge represented. For Charlie, it was a new beginning. He had learned from his mistakes and was ready to be the leader that Jake and the other officers needed. He was committed to rebuilding trust within the community and to ensuring that the department was a force for good. Jake, too, was ready for the future. He had grown and matured, and he was eager to continue his work as a police officer. He knew that the fight for justice was ongoing, but he was ready to face it with courage and conviction. And so, as the sun set over the city, casting a warm glow over the streets of Detroit, Charlie, Jake, and Clara stood together, united by their shared experiences and their commitment to justice. They knew that the road ahead would be challenging, but they were ready to face it head on, determined to make a difference and to build a better, more just world for all. As Charlie's journey unfolds, we learn that true justice requires courage and integrity. If this story resonated with you, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to join us for more stories that explore the complexities of human nature and the quest for redemption. Share your thoughts in the comments below.